comment, like, subscribe. The bell keeps you notified. It helps the show thrive. Body language is hugely important, with many believing that communication between people is by and large only 30 to 40% verbal, with the other 60 to 70% of communication being non-verbal with body language and hand gestures. Body language can range from huge sweeping gestures like waving our hands around to show how excited we are, to much more subtle things like narrowing our eyes together to show suspicion of someone or something. Body language is an awful lot like spoken language in the fact that it varies greatly across the globe with different gestures meaning different things in different parts of the world. For example, the gesture of curling your index finger to your palm to beckon someone over is very common in Europe and the Americas. However, this gesture is seen as offensive in parts of Asia like China and the Philippines. The country perhaps best known for its body language, however, has to be Italy. Italian hand gesture and body language has become world famous and even a meme at this point. Point. Italian people have become renowned for being incredibly expressive with their bodies when they talk. There's this great video of two Italian men talking to one another. You can't hear what they're actually saying, but their body language is so expressive, you can basically follow the conversation anyway. One of the first things that I started thinking about when I had this idea for this video is what actually dictates the use of this body language. Italian natives or the Italian language? Like, if you're from Italy and speak Italian as your first language, but also speak a second language like English or Mandarin? Do you still use your body language when you're speaking your second language? And conversely, if you aren't Italian but speak Italian as a second language, do you use this body language when you speak Italian? And even if you are Italian, are you more likely to use this body language if you're in Italy or not? Is it like an accent that you are more likely to use and pick up on if you are surrounded by other people doing it too? Annoyingly, I couldn't hop on a plane to Italy and figure this one out for myself, so I would love to hear from you you guys. As a research, I watched an interview the Italian great British Bake Off winner Giuseppe, where he was speaking English on an English show, and his body language was minimal, so maybe I'm wrong. Italy's body language most likely stems from the long and grand history that's played out over the nation. Many feel that the hand gestures of Italy date back to the nation's most famous residents, the Romans. A more accurate name for these hand gestures are chironomia, and it was developed by not only the Romans, but the Greeks before them too. A lot of Roman culture is of course borrowed from ancient Greece, and these gestures are no different. As to why they flourished in Rome, well, that seems to be debated. There's a couple of interesting theories on the Wikipedia page for Italian gesticulation, another fancy word for body language. One of these theories gives early capitalism the credit for pioneering these gestures. As markets began to pop up in ancient Rome, communication began to excel. This is because people had to talk more to barter and negotiate prices. This increased communication between people is thought to stimulate the use of hand gestures. This does make some sense. Market Markets can be loud, busy places, so hand gestures might make more sense to use over the hustle and bustle. Plus, traders could have been from other parts of the world, so verbal communication might have proved ineffective due to the trader and buyer speaking completely different languages. Another theory on the prominence of hand gesture and body language in Italy places the blame on the Renaissance period during the 15th to 16th century. The Renaissance was all about celebrating humanity and trying to take human thinking back to the time of antiquity like the ancient Romans and Greeks as opposed to the deeply religious thinking that so many people had gotten into by this point. It's thought that to try and get more people on board with this concept, people would speak much more dramatically to garner attention. This included the use of huge sweeping hand gestures to attract more people. Hand gestures helped deliver the message of the Renaissance to people who were still thinking in that medieval way. Of course, the birthplace of the Renaissance was Florence, which was and still is a large city. It seems that cities to this day still play a large role in the Italian hand gestures. Supposedly, Italian people from slash in cities are more likely to use these hand gestures. This is thought to come from the idea that it's both literally and figuratively harder to be heard within cities, so people needed a bit more gravitas to their communication in places like Florence, Naples, and Rome. Of course, the answer could also line the languages spoken across 
across the peninsula in the past. While Latin is seen as the language of the nation's past, a huge variety of languages have been spoken there before and especially after the Romans. When Western Rome fell, various tribes from across Europe settled in the land. They all spoke different languages so communication was difficult. This meant that body language and hand gestures started to play a much larger role in communication, becoming something of a universal language for everyone on the peninsula to use, regardless of what language they spoke natively. The country was only unified into the shape it is today in 1861. Today, there are thought to be around 250 different hand gestures used in Italian body language. Suffice to say, we won't be covering them all here, but I'd love to share with you some of the most popular and unique of them. A huge thank you has to go to the YouTube channel Intrepid Italian with Michelle. Their video on Italian hand gestures helped out amazingly. Go watch that video and their other videos if you want to learn more Italian, I know I will. Perhaps the most famous of their hand gestures is the Chiavua hand gesture. This translates into what do you mean and is more commonly called in English the pinched fingers or finger purse or even the pine cone. This is when the fingers on the hand are pinched together and face upwards. This gesture means something along the lines of what are you doing or what do you want but usually in a jovial manner accompanied by a silly face. Though it can be seen as more serious if you pull a more serious face while doing it. Of course one of the most beloved foods in Italian cuisine is spaghetti and the desire to go get some spaghetti has its own hand gesture too. This gesture is simply called the spaghetti gesture and involves pointing your index and middle finger downwards and twisting them imitating a fork wrangling up some spaghetti. And once you've eaten your spaghetti you might want to show how tasty it is. Well thankfully you can. The yum gesture signalizes that what you just ate was tasty and is done by poking your index finger into your cheek and twisting it around. It's a really fun gesture but from what I can gather it's primarily used with kids. If it was the best spaghetti you ever had however you might want to tell the world it was perfect. And there's a hand gesture for that too. This is the perfetto gesture. This is when you gather your fingers to your mouth kind of like with the pine cone gesture or you can just use your thumb and index finger too then release them towards yourself. This is used to say something is really good. It's pretty similar to the okay gesture used around the globe too. Another interesting gesture is the occhio slash eye gesture. This one is so interesting because it actually has two meanings depending on your facial expression. This gesture involves putting the skin just below your eye down with your index finger. If you do this with a serious face it means watch out. However if done with a silly face it means things like clever or sly. The andiamo gesture however is a bit more clear. It means let's get out of here and is done by pointing your fingers downwards and moving them in a diagonal line. This doesn't appear to be a fun let's get out of here but more a I'm not enjoying myself and need to leave kind of a let's get out of here. Italy even has hand gestures to signify when something changes drastically. This is physically called the riches to rags gesture and is done by placing your palm down flat then turning your hand around so it's instead facing upwards. This as mentioned is used to signal when something has changed drastically. Apparently though it's only really used to signify a change for the worst. You wouldn't seem to use this if someone were to win the lottery all of a sudden in example. A lot of Italian hand gestures relate to old traditions and superstitions of Italy it would seem. And none of these exemplify this better than the horn gesture. This gesture is done to protect yourself from bad omens and misfortune in general. It's done by pointing your little finger and index downwards with your other fingers tucked away. If this looks familiar at all, it's because it was this hand gesture that became popularized around the world thanks to heavy metal. Only the horns were pointing upwards in honor of the devil as opposed to scaring him away. Heavy Metal and Satan have had a long history together to say the least. If you think someone is being silly however for being scared of the devil, you could use the Paolua gesture. This is done a lot like the pinecone gesture but with spreading your fingers outwards and is used to tease someone about being scared of something. Though if you're just getting fed up with someone teasing you, you could say enough with your hands. This is with the basta gesture which simply means enough and can be used jokingly or seriously depending on the tone of your voice and your face. If someone is being naughty however, you could do the om om gesture. This is done by pointing your four fingers downwards, stretched out and moving your hand around. You would do this if you caught someone in the act of doing something they aren't supposed to be doing. If their behavior is annoying you however, you could do the 
the Margarada tea gesture, which means look at that and is used to signify that someone has done something that annoys you. This is done by raising your arm at the elbow and then pointing your fingers outwards with your palm in the air. This is actually a pretty common arm gesture outside of Italy too, and we do it to signify confusion. Now, however, we can move on to the really rude stuff. The gestures that parallel rude words. Sorry if these upset anyone. A great one is with the chin flick. This is when we flick our fingers away from under our chin. This means I don't care or I'm not bothered. We use it to show discontent with something. Then we have the umbrella gesture, which is much more aggressive, however. It means go away in much vulgar language. It's done by raising one hand into a fist and then slapping your other hand into the crook of your arm. Arm. Fun fact, the sprite for the Sailor and Pokemon games actually made this pose, but it was changed outside of Japan. Anyway, we're diving a little bit too far down an obscene gesture rabbit hole here. I was going to talk about biting thumbs, but that's not actually an Italian thing it would seem, but an English thing. It was popular in Elizabethan England, and this is when Shakespeare was alive, so when he put it in his play set in Italy, it became very much linked with the land. Though, anyway, I'm sure you can see now that Italy pretty much has a hand gesture for every everything and anything. Whether you want to get away from someone, tease someone, or just tell someone you're hungry for some spaghetti, there's very little you can't say with your hands in Italy. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, and the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos. $2 a month gets you all that, plus your name here with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.